But today, some of you need to understand that that's your problem. Your problem is not them, it's you. Because Jesus shows us one simple truth. How you feel is a result of how you choose to feel. See, we got a, we got a problem and we blame people for how we feel. Come on and say amen. We blame people for how we feel in life because they broke up with us. They dumped us. They did us wrong. They took from me. They, they, they. But do you not know? Yes, there may have been some action to you, but before the reaction comes, it's a result out of your choice to feel how you chose to feel. Yes, they did something that hurt you, but you chose to feel hurt. Yes, they did something to make you upset and angry but you have chosen to wallow in that anger do you not understand something when you really get this right then you will understand that I don't have to spend time in despair except the fact that I want to be there you've got to have enough Christian faith to know that I'm better than this that even though I may be hurt and confused I'm still fine even though I may be a little angry I'm still fine why are you fine because I'm not letting their action dictate how I feel some of you can't even sleep at night because of somebody else. Some of you come to church and will lose your religion over somebody else in the church. But understand, it's not their fault. It's your fault because you have made up your mind to be angry. You made up your mind to be jealous. You made up your mind to be envious. You made up your mind to be hurt. Don't you let nobody keep you from being happy. Don't you let nobody keep you up at night. Don't you let nobody keep you from eating your food. You better call somebody to know that I'm saved sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost and you don't determine me I determine me some of your blood pressure will go down when you get this message some of your stress will alleviate if you get this message some of your heart problems will go away if you get this message some of you won't even have to take medication if you get this message why don't you look at your neighbor and tell them neighbor make a new decision If you don't control your emotions, listen, you will feel yourself into acting outside the will of God. If you don't take control over your emotions, you will feel yourself into acting outside the will of God. Moses knew what I'm talking about because Exodus 32 19 says and it came to pass as soon as he came nigh unto the camp that he saw the calf and the dancing and Moses's anger waxed hot and he cast the tables out of his hands and break them beneath the mount now look at this story, if you will. Moses went up on the Mount of Sinai and talked with God, and God gave him the Ten Commandments. Moses stayed up there 40 days, and he wrote on those two big tablets of stone, put them over his shoulder, and when he came back into the camp, he saw the people now dancing and celebrating around a golden calf. And the golden calf was not a replacement for God, it was a replacement for him. The people had replaced him. They were looking to the calf for direction from God. And so Moses got mad. The Bible says he waxed hot. Moses flew in an instant into a rage and he broke the word of God. Moses let all hell break loose. He went through that camp and tore everything apart. But then the Bible also says that Moses had to go back and get 10 more commandments. But it wasn't new commandments, it was the same commandments because Moses' anger had messed him up. Some of us are gonna get tired of doing the same thing over again when we learn how to control our emotions. One thing you gotta understand, even from this life of Moses in this instant when he broke the commandments and God gave him new commandments which were the same commandments just on new tablets you have to understand sometimes you will stay in a season until you get yourself together 
Oh, y'all don't want to hear what I'm saying. You always like to hear the preacher say that this is your season and you're going to come out and you're going to come into and this is your time and everything works in a season and it's up to God, the Kairos time, not the Kronos time. But you have to understand that if you read the Bible closely enough, you will stay in situations as long as it takes for you to get yourself together. See, when God says, you didn't sanctify me in front of the congregation, Notice what Moses did. Moses took all of the attention from God and put it on him and his brother. And so when he struck the rock, he was demonstrating that I have the power and I'm the one that's blessing you and not God. So he did not sanctify God. All he had to do was just speak to the rock. And had he spoken to the rock, the people would have known it was God. But Moses got so angry with the people, once and again, he let his emotions take over to the point that he stole God's glory. If, if anybody in here is paying attention to me, you better learn something. God won't share the stage with you. You need to know from whence comes my help. All my help comes from the Lord. Lord, I don't know what you're going through today, but you better realize that God deserves the glory. If you're sick and need healing, if you go to the doctor, that's all right. But you better know that there's a doctor over your doctor, and he ain't never lost a case. And somebody know his name is Dr. Jesus. Tell your neighbor, I know from whence comes my help. I'm telling you again, if you do not control your emotions, you will feel yourself or feel your way to act outside the will of God. Let me make this plain. You got to look at it this way. The will of God is the yard that you live in. The devil won't come in the yard but he will pull you into the street. I wish I had somebody. The, 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 the devil won't come in the yard, but he will tempt you to come in the street. And so to leave God's yard is to play in the devil's street of traffic. When you are a child and you know that if you have children and if they would just stay in the yard, you know that there was a much better chance that everything going to be all right. But if they get out in the street, there is a better chance that they will be destroyed. We, we are now teaching our children how to cross the street, teaching them how to look both ways and how to observe and to know this from that. And if people pull up and ask you to come here, you scream for dear life and run back in the house because in the house there is security but in the street there is danger. Some of us haven't learned this yet and some of us learned it the hard way. Some of us don't even have a degree from an institution but we did graduate from the school of hard knocks. We did graduate because we were out in the street and we learned that playing in the street can be dangerous because in the street that's where the devil was. That's where the devil pulled you but aren't you glad that when you get back in the yard of God's will, everything that you need everything that you can think of everything that God has for you it's in the yard and you don't have to worry about anybody in the street because when you're in the yard you got some help for your problem tell your neighbor I got some help when I was a boy I wasn't always big I was a little guy but I was very fast and I remember going to school in the younger age when I had some older boys that were mad at me. And the only thing that I did, Kevin, was outrun them and embarrass them. They wanted to race. And I said, I want to race too. And I jumped in the race with the sixth grade boys. And I was in the third grade. And when we were racing, I beat all of them. And I heard one of them say, get him. And when I crossed the finish line, I got to move and I kept on running. I was only four blocks from my house, right there on Eureka Circle across from my daddy's church before we moved out in the county, right there. I knew that if I could just make it home, everything would be all right. And I cut through Eureka Park, ran around the swings two times and cut 
from the swings and ran through the tennis court, hopped over the fence, and when I got near the house, I yelled one name. I yelled, Anthony, Anthony, and I kept on yelling because the windows were up, and when I yelled the third time, Anthony came outside. He saw me in full stride, and he saw three boys chasing me, and so Anthony went to the edge of the yard, and when I got on our property, everybody else stopped running, and when I got behind Anthony, I just stood there and said, yeah, now do something. Yeah, come on, let's get it on right now. Because they wouldn't mess with my big brother. Why don't you reach over and tell your neighbor, just get on God's property. And everything will be all right. Get back in the wheel. Get back in the word. If you can get on God's property, everything will be all right. Just look at your neighbor and tell them, neighbor, you got to draw close. Tell them, neighbor, you got to submit your will. And tell them, don't worry about the enemy. Don't worry about what they're saying about you. Don't worry about what's on the news. Just hold on to his unchanging hand because we've got an older brother and his name is a wonderful. His name is a counselor. He's a mighty God. He's a prince of peace. Some of y'all don't know him. His name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. Won't he come out? I got it, I got it, I got it. Give three people a high five and tell them we got it, we got it, we got it, we got it. Yeah, 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 we got it. I want every head bowed, every eye closed. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, for these who have come, I pray a turnaround right now. God, I pray a turnaround that from this moment, things are going to be different. What happened this week and yesterday won't happen again. The devil has been busy, but I pray that right now, God, that you'll change their mind.